The Rams situation is essentially out of control. And to put it straightforward, Ram prices are extremely high right now. What initially brought this to my attention was I was over on Micro Center looking at some different things, you know, getting some potential material ready for some upcoming videos. And I noticed in their bundles, there was Ram missing. At first, I thought maybe it was just one particular bundle, but then I noticed the bundle that we got with the 12900K, which came with 32 gigabytes of DDR5, was missing in that bundle on Micro Center. So I looked at some of the AMD bundles and same thing, no RAM. And I was like, well, wait a minute, when did Micro Center stop selling their, you know, a RAM bundled with their motherboards and CPUs? An incredibly um, strong value proposition being that you're getting three of your core components already highly optimized for one another in one potentially money-saving bundle. But then I kept browsing over Micro Center. I'm like, yeah, there's no RAM <laughs> included in their bundle. So I said, well, why is that? And immediately I said, did RAM prices go up, right? And so I went over on Micro Center. I started browsing their RAM section. And sure enough, I'm like, these prices seem exorbitantly high for DDR5. Maybe DDR5 shortages may affect the prices at the time I thought, but no. I went over on the DDR4 side and DDR4 prices are abnormally higher than what they should be. I bought this kit of T-Force Vulcan Z 16 gigabyte kit DDR4 RAM over on Amazon around early and beginning of this year, about January, I think I ordered it somewhere between there, about January for 29 USD. This same RAM I found for the cheapest price is going for $80 right now. And that could really affect the overall, you know, cost of your budget, depending on what you're trying to build and what you're trying to achieve for. That extra $50 could be the difference of going with a lower end uh, GPU or a higher end GPU. And the same for a motherboard and even potentially your CPU. And so just to be sure that maybe it could be a micro center issue, I jumped over to one of the largest online retail distributors being Amazon and noticed that yes, even the DDR5 over on Amazon is going for an average for about 200 USD. Again, for a 32 gigabyte kit of DDR5, that's going for about 200 USD. I believe when we bought the 12900K and motherboard RAM CPU combo, I think it cost a little over 349, a little over 400 bucks, almost half the cost of just DDR, a kit of 32 gigabyte kit of DDR5 RAM with that cost you right now going for an average of 200 USD. And then for DDR4, I noticed that the average cost of a 16 gigabyte kit was going for about 90 USD, 90 USD for a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR4 here in 2025. And then for 32 gigabytes, I noticed it was going for about $130, $130 for a 32 gigabyte kit of DDR4 just abnormally higher than what we've seen in the past year and even prior to that maybe since the chip shortage of around 2017 18 19 even quite possibly and just to be on the safe side i jumped over to best buy to add an additional you know test variable to all of the different costs between ddr5 and ddr4 and sure enough over on the ddr5 side on best buy the RAM was selling for a little under 200 USD, but for me, once you factor in sales tax, that'll put me over 200 USD. So about the average I found over on Amazon and Micro Center. And then the same thing could be said over for the DDR4 site on Best Buy, still selling for slightly higher over here too as well, about 80 to 90 USD. And in some instances, a little less, but that could come with a hindrance on DDR4 speeds. And that's something you definitely want to factor in and take into consideration if you're going to be running a Ryzen based, an AMD Ryzen based system. One thing you also want to take into consideration is the possibility of just holding on to your RAM and not selling it at all until prices either come down 
or should the demand increase and you could possibly get a little bit more value for your RAM should you want to pass that off to someone else and RAM could get harder and harder to come by. And I just want to note that RAM is and has been historically an important component for your overall system and being that a lot of games now are requiring 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 16 gigabytes of RAM, that now is quite possibly the time to start recommending 32 gigabytes of RAM being that that'll leave you a little bit of overhead for streaming or recording your gameplay or anything else you want to do in between and even as games become more demanding or should your needs increase and you want to play at higher resolutions or higher graphic details then going above 16 gigabytes right especially for beyond 1080p high settings gaming could be largely out of reach for a lot of gamers being that this would drive the overall cost of your budget higher than what most and many should and likely had originally anticipated now i know what you're saying what could be the cost of ram prices going up so high so much as they have been since the beginning of 2025 midway of 2025 well being that two of the largest manufacturers two of the largest players over any manufacturing sector for ram being g skill and corsair just to name a two there's a lot in, in between but for the most part they make chips for a lot of these different manufacturers but for the most part these two companies the companies that manufacture memory chips for corsair and g skill they are manufactured overseas with corsair their memory chips are being manufactured over in china and right now they're being affected by a 30% tariff right now. And the same thing with G-Skill, with their memory chips being manufactured over in Taiwanese or Taiwan, and they're being affected by a 20% tariff. So this could be very much the reason why RAM prices have gone up. And this is affecting both DDR4 and DDR5, right? Both platforms, regardless of the platform you want to go on, whether it's like an old new or one of the newer modern platforms, RAM prices are being affected by these tariffs. And while it does seem like it's detrimental on the surface level, right? A surface value where you're like, hey, how can we mitigate this? Is there a way around this? Should I just go ahead and pay and just absorb those extra costs that are being affected by tariffs, which are always historically typically handed down by consumers? But what should I do? Should I go ahead and absorb that cost or should I find another avenue, another route? Where typically for us, that other route is the used market. And full disclaimer, that could very much look different for where you are located or where you're watching this video. We have a lot of different viewers and I love and appreciate all of you. In fact, if you haven't yet, do me a favor, like this video and hit the subscribe button for future content coming up, especially like the ROG Ally. I give you a mini update here a little bit along the lines towards the end of this video. So sh do be sure to stick around for that. But regardless of where you're watching from, there is a potential used market available to you. And I checked one of the biggest that's accessible to me, that being the Facebook marketplace. There are a lot of others and offer up is like a, a mirror version of the Facebook marketplace. So if you don't have Facebook, you can check marketplace. You can check Craigslist, just to name a few. Again, your online you know, meet up, swap meet, or, you know, sell and shop site may look different for you, depending on where you're located. But for me, I checked over on the Facebook marketplace and I was able to find DDR4 kits, mainly DDR4 kits, not a lot of DDR5 kits. It is essentially still a new-ish platform. So I don't foresee a lot of gamers saying, hey, let me switch from 32 to say 64. If you jumped on a platform early, chances are you, you went in on DDR5 with the exact memory configuration that was specific to your needs. But the marketplace is a good start to look for DDR4, especially DDR4. If you are looking to build on the newer DDR4 platform, say you're coming from DDR3, or you're trying to replace a component, maybe you are chugging along with eight gigabytes and you need an essential upgrade that very much could be one 2x in your memory output for sure but check the used market there are some you know there are some areas of concern you should you should have and some precautions you should take 
But if you're comfortable with communicating, communicating with sellers online and you're comfortable with meeting in person in a safe space, then you could save anywhere from 60 to $70 potentially being that I saw DDR4 kits going for around 20, 25, 30 eBay sellers may, you know, may hip on to what's going on or you know they may catch wind to the prices for new memory kits and that may also could affect the used market over on ebay but the perfect time is now and if you're ready or if you're looking to do any of those aforementioned things upgrade your system uh, finish your finish your system right or replace a faulty component then now would be the time to take advantage of RAM being in an awkward place. And this is for the foreseeable future. We really don't have a timetable on when this could end or when we can see RAM prices coming down. Right now, they are essentially high, higher than even I would like to admit, even, even I would like to see, broke my heart to not see, speaking of, to not see bundles over on Micro Center. Again, a lot of value there. You can save a lot of money just go ahead and getting all of those three components bundled together and they're already again optimized for your needs you just need your gpu case and storage and you're good to go psu and you're good to go cooling solution you're good to go but those three components are eliminated when you're able to get into a micro center and buy a bundle but right now ram's not being offered with them ram is incredibly high check the used market if you need to save money in any of those areas and we will hopefully have a better update in 2026 when ram prices come down i also wanted to give a quick update on the rog ally now i had everything set up good to go but the dock that i originally bought i'm having issues with getting a video output i tried different usb type c cables i bought different type c cables thinking it needed to be one that supported you know video transfer video out over USB-C and still no avail I'm still not getting a video output so the continuation of the R Asus ROG Ally may be without the desktop version but that seems a little advantageous being that it's a comprehensive review and I want to try to cover as many bases as possible with the Asus ROG Ally that's all i got for this one y'all again if you haven't yet do me a favor and hit the like button for me on this quick update video and subscribe to the smt channel if you're new to the community with the notification bell turned on to receive all notifications on all con content uploaded here on the channel you can find more content down in the description box below how to overclock your graphics card how to overclock your cpu how to builds and everything else in between but i do hope to catch you all in the next one so until then be easy